It seems like every year a new phone is released with better and bigger lenses to boost our creative abilities. And this makes sense since our phones have become such a important piece of device in our daily lives. Uh, we use it to pay for food deliveries, they entertain us, they capture our special moments with its camera, and they even tell us how active we are with our fitness. A year ago, I ran with the idea that I don't need a big bulky camera if I purchase lens mounts for my phone with the hope that I can get an amazing photos when I'm out. Now that a year has passed and it's 2021, I'm going to tell you whether this mini glass lens is worth spending your cash on. The Moment 60mm Telelens version 2. This lens essentially creates more focal length on your phone that you normally wouldn't get unless you're using a mirrorless or full frame camera. The sturdy glass lens is attached to your phone's camera by using a phone case as an adapter. The lens is the second version of their telephoto lenses that give you more zoom for your phone. And it's just one of a few different lenses offered by Moment. Designed for phones with apertures of 1.8 lenses, it attaches to your phone's case with just a quarter twist. The equivalent focal length of the Moment 60mm lens is 58mm on an X-Phone XS wide, making this ideal for portrait photos. It's all about far out distances with this lens, so it requires a minimum focal length of 7.25 inches, where anything closer would cause your subject to be blurry. I purchased this lens in 2020 with the idea that I can have the convenience of getting more zoom on my phone without having to carry a full frame camera or a mirrorless camera. At the time, I bought this on eBay used for $75, and at the time, it was priced much lower than the $120 retail price. But after a few uses during my day trips or hikes, I wasn't able to capture all that I wanted. At least that's what I thought in my head. A year ago, I didn't know much about lenses, types of it, focal lengths, or anything camera related, so I bought this not knowing how useful this is going to be in the long term. Because of the lens's narrow field of view, it's terrible for landscape photography, which I didn't know at the time. This lens is actually ideal for those who don't have a portrait mode on their phones or want to get more of that flattened or blurred out background in their photos. Something to mention is that you won't unlock the full potential of this lens unless you're using an app that lets you manually focus on your subject. To go along with this lens, I purchased the Pro Camera app from the App Store. I got a really good deal at the time by signing up on Apple's credit card offered through uh, the company called Barclays, uh, where I received a $25 credit to use in their Apple Store. The app is $7 on the App Store and it is great, but you can use any app that lets you manually control your focus, ISO, shutter speed, and you do just fine. If you want to stick with just your phone's camera app, that's fine too. But if you want to make your photos pop, it could be a good idea to download a camera app. If you're unsure of whether a camera app you're interested in is right for you, or you want to learn more about how to make your photos pop, feel free to leave a post in the comments below and I'll be happy to help you out. Now, with the Moment Lens, you have to have one of their phone cases, but their cases are great to bang up and not care much about while you're protecting your phone. And the fact that I can bang it up frees my life where I don't have to worry much if it gets scratched. It's not really the case I use because of its weight, but my typical case is a catalyst that I really like better for everyday use. This particular lens is from their M series, which is compatible with the current iPhone 12. However, I have an iPhone XR, and for me, the lens worked well with an older phone such as mine. I did capture something with this lens that I want to share with you, and that's a dad joke moment. Are you ready for this? How was Rome split in two? With a pair of Caesars. Having a lens on your case does add some bulk to it, so you do have to learn to either walk around with the lens with the case or keep your lens in a pouch and screw it on when needed. I found that for me, I like to carry the lens in its pouch, which I put inside a pouch on my backpack because I found that I didn't need the lens all the time and sometimes it just made sense not to use it. 
I found that the lens does flatten the background to your subject somewhat. And in some situations, it is nice to get a bit more optical zoom when you otherwise can't get any closer. I did take two great photos with this lens on portrait mode with my iPhone XR in San Francisco on the Lion Street steps. A self-portrait with a tripod and one of the steps themselves. You might notice that in the self-portrait, the background is blurred and this was just with the regular photo app without portrait mode on an iPhone XR. As for the other photo, this was taken with just the photo app on the top of the steps at Lion Street. Moment has since released a 58 mm lens, which may make you think that this lens is outdated. However, that's just not the case as this lens is still compatible with the newer phones on the market. Although the lens isn't available anymore directly from Moment, it can be found elsewhere, such as on eBay or Facebook Marketplace. Now, if you're in a market for a phone case, these cases are still great just by themselves, especially the ones with the wood grain back in my opinion. However, these cases are not compatible with wireless charging at this time. New moment cases are indeed compatible, especially with MagSafe. The case and lens are covered in their lifetime warranty, so for those who are worried about workmanship problems, you'll be happy to know that your purchase will be protected. Depending on your phone type, the cases can go as high as $50 for new phones and as low as $20 for older phones. This particular lens is designed for phones with an aperture of 1.8. If you're not sure if this works for your phone, do a search for something like iPhone 12 Pro Aperture and look for a two digit number with an F in front of it. The new iPhone 12 has an aperture of F 1.6, so it might not work as well. I would imagine that the 0.2 increase in aperture size is the reason why Moment released a 58 millimeter lens. If you've used this lens on an iPhone 12, leave a comment so that way I can add it to my description on how well they work together. If you're unsure if your phone is compatible, also leave a comment below and I'll be sure to help you out. My video channel focuses primarily on products I purchase myself, so it may be a long time before I ever review an iPhone 12 with this lens. I'm just not in the market for an iPhone 12 and I personally feel that my iPhone XR does a fine job for the time being. For new users, it gives you four times the optical zoom when mounted over the telephoto lens or two times the zoom on the regular lens. And it doesn't matter if you're using an iPhone or an Android. Now, with all this has been said, what do I really feel about this lens? I personally stopped using this lens because I didn't find it got close enough to my subjects. I don't find myself taking a whole lot of portrait photos with this lens just because the portrait mode of my iPhone does a good enough job for what I want. I feel that the portrait mode on my phone is perfect for those selfie moments where I have to stick my arm out. The only time you could be using this lens is if you're doing portrait photos out in the field. But do you really feel like you wanna carry around a knobby lens? I sure didn't and it showed because I just never used this lens except for I think a handful of times. I've taken a few landscape photos with this lens and it doesn't get wide enough angle to capture more of the landscape to give people who see my photos a sense of being there with me. I'm primarily a landscape photographer, so when I'm out and about, this lens didn't help at all. Now, a year ago, I didn't know anything about focal lengths. However, looking back throughout the year that I had this lens, it's all right. I don't think it's something you really need though. I mean, if you're a dancer, promoter, DJ, or instructor, I also don't see a need for this, even if you have the money for it. There's a few blogs on Moment's website on how to maximize the use of this lens, which I'll share below in the description. However, the lens is outdated, especially with the newer phones with their own built-in telephoto lenses. You can try it out for more creative projects, but I don't see this lens staying in your toolbox. I didn't feel that this was worth the money to keep and I ended up selling it back on eBay for $20 with free shipping. Now, don't feel like Moment creates bad products. In fact, they produce some fantastic lenses, in particular, the wide angle and the anamorphic lens, which I'll review very soon. Except that this is the least useful lens of all the Moment lenses in my opinion. 
Now that I've tested this out for a year and I now have a better understanding of how lenses work, I give this Momotelo lens three stars after a year since it's been released. Next week, I'm gonna be sharing a video on some of the most important pieces of equipment you need if you're planning to teach from home or you're planning to showcase some dancing or yourself DJing. Be sure to click the subscribe button and click the bell icon to be notified of when this is gonna be published. That's it for today. Thanks for watching this video. I hope this video was helpful for you in some sort of way. If it was, don't forget to click the subscribe button, click the notify button, and I'll see you next week or so. Until then, be safe. I just wanna say a thank you to my recent subscribers, Pat, Albert. Thanks guys for subscribing to my channel. And of course, uh, anyone else who's going to be subscribing later, I'll be sure to thank you also.